Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Foundation by Isaac Asimov. So this is the first in one of his kind of most iconic series. I will read you the blurb here. This is the first volume of Asimov's world-famous trilogy, one of the great classics of science fiction. The time is a future century, in the days of the Galactic Empire, a society of a million worlds throughout the Milky Way. The old empire is crumbling into barbarism, and Harry Seldon and his band of psychologists see before them only the despair of thousands of years of anarchy, unless they can create a new force, the Foundation, dedicated to art, science and technology, the nucleus of a new empire. The epic story of Foundation is continued in Foundation and Empire and Second Foundation, both available as Panther books. So I'm going to go through and check out some of my flags here. So we have this one part where we have uh, a kind of a question and answer part where basically they're trying to get the permission to make this huge, um, uh, what would you call it, uh, encyclopedia almost I guess, of like everything known to this society. Uh, so we have here, uh, question, you do not consider your statement a disloyal one? Answer, no sir, scientific truth is beyond loyalty and disloyalty, which I agree with. I think this bit's quite interesting as well, so question, then let us see how. Can the future be changed, Dr. Selden? Answer, obviously. This courtroom may explode in the next few hours, or it may not. If it did, the future would undoubtedly be changed in some minor respects. Question, you quibble, Dr. Selden. Can the overall history of the human race be changed? Answer, yes. Question, easily? Answer, no, with great difficulty. Question, why? Answer. The psycho-historic trend of a planet full of people contains a huge inertia. To be changed, it must be met with something possessing a similar inertia. Either as many people must be concerned, or if the number of people be relatively small, enormous time for change must be allowed. And this obviously has a kind of, uh, this kind of reflects the current world we live in with things like the climate crisis. And basically, uh, the doctor's saying they can't stop the fall of this galactic empire. He says, I do not say now that we can prevent the fall. But it, is not too, but it is not yet too late to shorten the interregnum which will follow. It is possible, gentlemen, to reduce the duration of anarchy to a single millennium, if my group is allowed to act now. We are at a delicate moment in history. The huge onrushing mass of events must be deflected just a little, just a little. It cannot be much, but it may be enough to remove 29,000 years of misery from human history. Oh, then we have a character called Harden, who lights a long cigar of vegan tobacco. And his, his um, colleague kind of goes like, oh, where did you get that vegan tobacco from? And I'm not sure whether that means the same as vegan does now. Because you, technically vegan tobacco would be tobacco that hasn't been tested on animals. That, you know, is from a company that doesn't test on animals. Which, there aren't many tobacco companies, alas. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure what that was all about. I liked uh, just Asimov was using the term parsecs as a measure of distance and that might be like familiar to you from the original Star Wars movies. It's kind of famous that basically Han Solo said uh, the Millennium Falcon did the, the whatever, the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. But parsecs is a unit of distance and so I think then George Lucas at a later date explained that he'd found like a wormhole through space or had taken some sort of shortcut through something and that's why he'd done it in less than 12 parsecs. It's like the mistake some people make of thinking of a light year as a period of time when it's not, it's a period of distance. I like this little exchange. Um, so um, someone goes, the only catch, Commodore, is that you're going to be burdened with an immense quantity of riches. Indeed, he snuffled. But what could I want with riches? The true wealth is the love of one's people. I have that. You can have both, for it's possible to gather gold with one hand and love with the other. I thought this as well afterwards was quite funny because there's a lot of like a focus on religion here really like the nuclear reactors and whatnot are governed by like priests who don't really know the science behind what they're doing they just know the religion behind what they're doing which the religion is made by the scientists I guess so um, here we have this it could be arranged Trader Mallow but tomorrow tomorrow would you dine with us tonight my men began Mallow let them all come said the Commodore expansively a symbolic friendly union of our nations. It will give us a chance for further friendly discussion. But one thing, his face lengthened and grew stern. None of your religion. Don't think that all this is an entering wedge for your missionaries. Commodore, said Mallow dryly, I give you my word that religion would cut my profits. So there is some interesting stuff in here on like the convergence between science and religion, you know? I like this little bit as well. So this tech guy is talking about, I think some uh, generators. And uh, he's, the tech man shook his head indignantly. They don't break down. They never break down. They were built for eternity. Eternity is a long time. Just suppose... It is unscientific to suppose meaningless cases. I enjoyed that little response there. 
I like this discussion here as well. So, um, so far I followed orders, but beyond that I was and still am a free agent. According to the laws of the foundation, a master trader may open whatever new markets he can and receive therefrom his due half of the profits. What are your objections? I don't see them. Sup bent his eyes carefully toward the wall and spoke with a difficult lack of anger. It is the general custom of all traders to advance the religion of their trade. I adhere to law and not to custom. There are times when custom can be the higher law. Then appeal to the courts. Uh, yeah, it was okay. I wasn't super impressed by this, actually. The problem is, is that my expectations were so high going into this. And, like, I didn't think this was as good as, say, iRobot or The End of Eternity. Uh, it was more along the lines of something like Earth is Room Enough, which I, I kind of thought was okay. But I wasn't totally blown away by. And just because so many people talk about the Foundation series. I mean, it's like the definitive series by the definitive sci-fi writer. And while it does have a lot of really fascinating ideas in here, and Asimov as always does a great job of exploring them, it just wasn't as mind-blowing as I expected it to be, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I still enjoyed it. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It's a pretty solid read, and, you know, technically it's very well written. As you can tell, I liked a lot of the dialogue, a lot of the ideas. It's just, uh, I was just expecting so much more, and I just ended up feeling a little disappointed, so... But I will be reading more Asimov in the future. So as always on that note, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book or indeed any Asimov. And uh, we can get a little discussion going. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.